Okay, so this chapter is the patterns of inheritance, which is basically genetics. Here we're looking at um, Gregor Mendel. He is the father of modern genetics because of all of his contributions to this field. Okay, so in this first slide here, we're, they're talking about the people of Tibet, and they're, they want you to... Well, I want you to keep this in mind as you go through um, this material. So the people of Tibet can work and survive and live at an altitude of 13,000 feet. Okay, so normally, like you and I, people that are not from Tibet, basically, wouldn't be able to do that. We would actually pass out. We wouldn't be able to handle that because our blood oxygen levels would decrease, and we wouldn't be able to even stand up in that altitude, let alone work. So how do these people, you know, work in that altitude and the simple answer is the fact uh, that evolution has occurred to these people. They have um, lived in this region for you know a, maybe like 1,100 years or more, and over that time, they have acquired genetic mutations that have allowed them to um, be able to breathe and process oxygen and transport oxygen through their cardiovascular and respiratory system at this altitude because of genes um, that they have acquired, which, of course, we don't have. So keep that in mind, the fact that, um, you know, we are evolving, people evolve, uh, animals evolve, and they evolve to suit their environment. And now we're going to look at the history of genetics and um, some background information to start with. So Genetics is a branch of biology where basically what is studied is uh, the hereditary material that we have, which is DNA, and um, why and how we are varied from other individuals, from our parents. Um, you know, the it's basically the study of genetic material, hereditary material, and how it's inherited. So how it's passed on from parent to offspring. This has been used, genetic information has been used in agricultural, in the agricultural revolution and industry for thousands of years. Um, and animal breeding, in medicine. And so it's used quite a bit. And uh, before Gregor Mendel, we had early beliefs, two early beliefs. Uh, ultimately, what people thought was that when two individuals reproduce or have a child, that their genes or their, they didn't know that they were called genes, but they, their, their physical traits were blended. And um, they also believed that... Uh, not only was there blending, but that a parent could modify their own genetics or their own traits and then pass that on to their children. Okay, um, now it can be passed on to the children, but modified traits cannot be passed on to children. All right, so not until Gregor Mendel, who um, is called the father of modern genetics, this is Gregor Mendel, he it was an Austrian monk who used pea plants, uh, like the peas that we eat. <laughs> they grow on this type of plant um, over here. Okay, this is the pea plant. Right, so he studied everything about them. Um, the actual pod, whether they're plump versus wrinkled, round versus wrinkled peas, colors, green versus yellow peas, green versus yellow pods, white versus purple flowers. Okay, so he figured out from studying pea plants that um, basically he, he figured out rules for genetics that we still follow today. Okay, so let's look at some terminology before we go over his study. So this, these are important terms now. In previous chapters, we learned 
what homologous chromosomes were. So this is a pair of homologous chromosomes. Let's say this one's the mother, this one is the maternal, this one's the paternal. Okay, so this is a set of homologous chromosomes. Now we know that homologous chromosomes have the same genes, right? But uh, they're going to be different because you inherited one from mom, one from dad. All right, so a couple of definitions. Homologous chromosomes are a pair of chromosomes. All of our chromosomes come in pairs. So we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Okay, uh, genes are the hereditary units and their segments of DNA. On each gene, we have something called um, alleles, and that's these letters. So these two letters here, these are alleles. Okay, these two letters here are another set of alleles. These are another set of alleles. Okay, the location where a gene is located is called the locus or loci. And there's three possible combinations of the way that genes will appear in combinations of alleles. They're either going to be homozygous dominant, and we use a capital letter, capital letter, homozygous recessive, which we'll use a lowercase, lowercase, and heterozygous, where we use one capital and one lowercase. And so we want to know what a gene is, alleles, a locus, uh, homo homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, and heterozygous, and of course, what a homologous chromosome is. Okay, so we use terms called genotype and phenotype. Genotype, the genotype is the actual set of alleles. Okay, so the letters, basically. The phenotype is the physical, uh, the physical observable trait or functional, physical and functional trait, depending on what it is. Now, if you look at this chart here, the genotypes are listed. Okay, capital E, capital E, that's homozygous dominant, capital E, lowercase e, that's heterozygous, uh, lowercase e, lowercase e, that's homozygous recessive. The, the, this is the genotype. The phenotype is the description of what that genotype encodes for. So here we're talking about detached earlobes. So if you grab your earlobes right now, check to see if you're detached or attached to the side of your head. So detached earlobes is the dominant trait, and this genotype encodes for this phenotype. Same thing here. Um, in a situation where you have heterozygous alleles, one capital, one lowercase, what is expressed is the dominant trait. And here the dominant trait is detached earlobes. And then finally, we have homozygous recessive, which is attached earlobes. So if your earlobes are attached to the side of your head, then those are your, that's your genotype. Okay, so those terms are important because when we move on to solving Punnett squares, we are going to use those terms quite a bit. Now, it's important to understand a couple rules about dominant and recessive. Now, dominant alleles um, are expressed with a capital letter, and they mask the expression of the recessive letter. So what that means is that masking something, that means it covers it up, it, it masks it, but uh, the recessive trait is not vanished, it's not uh, blended, it's not, it doesn't disappear, it's just hidden, it's masked, it's not expressed in other words. And then, so to be more, even more specific, when we have recessive alleles, both letters have to, and it, both letters have to be lowercase, we have to be homozygous recessive for a trait to be able to see it. If it's heterozygous or homozygous dominant, the dominant trait will be expressed only when the individual is homozygous um, recessive uh, will we be able to see the, um, the recessive trait. And so here what we're showing is 
um, a person that has brown eyes and a person that has blue eyes reproducing and each one is going to pass on one allele and the child will get will be heterozygous but their phenotype is going to be uh, the dominant phenotype because the recessive letter it, the recessive trait is masked by the dominant trait in heterozygous. The only way to get the recessive trait, such as blue eyes here, you would have to have uh, lowercase, um, both lowercase, both recessive. Now this isn't the full story for eye color, this is just part of the story. Okay, so let's go back to Gregor Mendel. What did he do that was so important? So what he did was this. <sighs> he took two flowers uh, from the pea plant, purple and white. And these are pure purple flowers. And these were pure white flowers. And he called this the parent generation and he also called them true breeding. Okay, the phenotype is purple for this, in, uh, for this parent. The genotype is homozygous dominant. Um, so capital P, capital P. The white is, the phenotype is white, and then the genotype is lowercase p, lowercase p, or homozygous recessive. Um, when he crossed these two parents, the entire first generation, which he called F1 generation, produced all purple plants. And the, because all of them came out to be um, heterozygous and therefore they were all purple. However, when he took two uh, parents from the F1 generation and crossed them in the F2 generation, he got the following. He got 75% uh, or three-fourths, three-quarters of his plants were purple and one-fourth of the crop was white. So here in the F1 generation, there is no white. It goes away because it is simply masked. And it is, again, uh, expressed in the F2 generation. And it's technically expressed at a three-to-one ratio. So let's take a closer look at what that is. Okay, so we what they've done is set up a simple allele, uh, I mean, um, a simple Punnett square to solve this. So we know that if you take two true breeding parents, where we know they're homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, the entire F1 generation is going to be heterozygous. All will be heterozygous, and all will be purple. Okay, now if you take two parents, that are heterozygous for both traits, and you align them into uh, a Punnett square, so parent one will go here, capital P, lowercase p. Parent two will go here, capital P, lowercase p. And then you fill in the letters in each column. Oops, I meant to put that. Um, just undo that. Okay, so that should have gone here. Okay, same thing for the lowercase p. It'll go in this box and it'll go in this box in this column. Then you do these rows. Capital P will go here and here. The lowercase p will get placed in this box and this box. And I know I've somewhat covered them up. Um, which we can, you know, get rid of actually, so we can look at closely. Um, yeah, you see how those were filled in. That's the important part. And when we look at the outcome, we have capital P, capital P in this box. Uh, capital P, lowercase p in this box. Capital P, lowercase p in this box lowercase p, lowercase p in this box. So what we say with the phenotypic ratio, okay, we say we have a three to one, because if you count these up, there's one, two, three out of four, right, that are purple. 
and one uh, out of four or one fourth will be white. So we say it has a three to one phenotypic ratio in which the three is representing the dominant trait and the white is representing the recessive trait. The genotypic ratio is a one to two to one genotypic ratio. So one has homozygous dominant. Uh, two of them are going to be heterozygous and one will be homozygous recessive. Okay, very good. Okay, now Mendel repeated this over and over and over again with everything flower color, um, the way the uh, terminals of the, the flowers were positioned, okay, um, the seed color, yellow versus green, um, round versus wrinkled, and he went on and on. Every trait that he could test, he did, and he was able to write a few laws for us. Now, um, the laws we will get to, and I want to quickly emphasize something. Uh, what we just saw in the Punnett squares, that was called a monohybrid cross. Mono means one, and hybrid means hybrid, and cross means cross. So when we are looking at one trait, two parents, one trait, here we're looking at flower color. Every time you cross an individual, that is completely homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive, your entire F1 generation is going to be heterozygous. Every time you take two parents that are heterozygous, every single time, doesn't matter what it is, you will always get a three to one phenotypic ratio and a, or a, I'm sorry, and a one to two to one genotypic ratio every single time. Okay, now in my next video, I'm going to continue this lecture, but I want you guys to practice mono hybrid crosses. I will post an assignment shortly online.